I'm just waiting for more people to get on. <laughs> okay. It's slowly coming up. Okay, great. All right. Okay, we'll get started. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, we're very excited to have our guest today, Carol Tonello Sampson with Hyperbaric. She was one of the Red Circle honorees from the Women's Alliance Network. So we're, we're just very excited to have her speak on the technology of high pressure processing. Um, we also have our host extraordinaire, Matt Hartman from Blendtec. He is one of, he's a senior account manager for them. And he's also the chair of our technology network. Um, he'll be moderating today's webinar. My name is Christine Radke. I'm a director of networks and special projects here at FPSA. And before I hand it over to Matt, I just wanted to uh, go over some housekeeping items real quickly. At any time during the broadcast, you can type in your questions. It's on the right-hand panel of the GoToWebinar um, uh, docket on the, on the right. You can type in any questions at any time. We'll try to get to the, all your questions. If we can't, uh, maybe we can answer it after the webinar. Also, after the webinar, you'll receive an email from GoToWebinar, which will have a link to the recording, which you can share with your colleagues, but we'll also have that recording available on FPS website, FPSA's website on their member section. Uh, you'll also receive a certificate of attendance. If you have more than one person in your room, in your office that's watching this, and you want your own significant your own certificate of attendance just send me an email and um, i'll send one to you also we're going to have a short survey we as a technology network we like to gauge your what you thought about the webinar if you have ideas for new webinars um, we'd love to hear from you so with that i'm going to introduce and pass it on to our moderator matt hartman oh, thank you christine so we have a few things, a few little bit of announcements we need to go over. So uh, I want to uh, get a, a shameless plug in for the annual conference coming up on March 4th through 6th in uh, Carlsbad, California. Uh, I would love to see uh, as many people there as possible and, and more contributors to the technology network going forward with this, this year. So please, if you can make it, we would sure love to have uh, as many people as possible. And then uh, the Women's Alliance has a webinar coming up shortly in March. It's uh, Your Attention, uh, the Secret Ingredients of Successful Leaders uh, webinar coming up on March 12th at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So for today, uh, as Christine said, we have uh, Carol Tonello Sampson uh, from uh, Hyperbaric. She's a, a commercial and applications director for Hyperbaric, the world leader in designing, manufacturing, and marketing high pressure processing industrial machines for the food industry. She is also a member of the company's board of directors. And prior to Hyperbaric, Tonello Sampson worked for HPP uh, R&D companies in France as an industrial researcher with the emphasis in HPP for food. After her undergraduate studies in biochemistry and food technology in France, she obtained a PhD in food science on the effects of HPP on the inactivation of microorganisms. Well, Carol comes to us from north of Madrid this afternoon. It's approximately 8 p.m. there. So thank you for joining us into your evening. So uh, my first question as we went through this and we were talking about it, the first question that came to my mind, Carol, is you know, how did you get yourself into uh, HPP, into high pressure processing? Okay, so thank you, Matt, for the nice introduction. So thank you, Christine, for um, for the webinar, for all the organization. Uh, well, how I started in HPP, uh, I started with uh, uh, with my PhD in in 1992. Um, there was an, an interest for this new technology because the the first uh, products were launched. First HPP products were launched in 1990. Um, in Japan, uh, um, jams and, and juices uh, were launched, and so there, there was an interest in Europe, also in North America, to understand the technology, and so I could start a, a PhD on this on this subject, as the, the the interest the main interest of this technology is to kill microorganisms, uh, as I was microbiologist, so I started with that, 
and I'm still here. So that's great. <laughs> Whatever you were going down the road of HPP, and you, I think you made a comment about it started in Japan a few seconds ago. Uh, was there a particular problem do you, that they were trying to solve with this technology? Uh, the, the interesting point was that uh, in Japan, they were looking for a non-thermal technology uh, to avoid the, the problem that can uh, uh, cause heat processing, so change of color, texture. Uh, well, they, they wanted to find something fresher uh, to, to be able to bring uh, uh, to the market fresher products, but uh, with a non-thermal technology. And uh, we know that uh, concerning killing microorganisms, the most efficient technology is irradiation, but in Japan, irradiation is uh, is prohibited for food uh, because during the Second World War, uh, they they had uh, well, they, since then they are really against uh, uh, against irradiation. It, it's prohibited for for food. This is uh, this is why they they invested in a very large R and D uh, public uh, uh, program, and and they and they could develop the first uh, commercial commercial products. Nevertheless, the technology was known since the first publication on food were from uh, an American researcher, it or it, I don't know how to pronounce, sorry, I pronounce it uh, Spanish, so it, it, it should be it, and, uh, and it published the uh, um, extension of shelf life of uh, uh, milk in uh, 1899, so uh, more than one century ago. At this that time, is... the, te the technology, the machines were really uh, at laboratory scale, not reliable. So it was not possible one century ago to in, uh, to have industrial uh, hypersheet machines. Now it's now it's possible, and of course the the technology have, uh, has grown a lot. Hey, hey, so clearly things must have changed over the last century with it. But do you feel that, that the principles are still the same? That, that... principles. That's 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 great. Principles are exactly the same. If you want, I can I can show uh, my my screen and I have a few slides. Okay, uh, just, please. Just to, to show you. So the the principle is uh, quite uh, quite simple. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, I hope you you can see my my screen and um, uh, we. Uh, uh, the high pressure processing is to uh, uh, apply uh, uh, to food very high pressure transmitted by, by water. Those, those pressure are around six tons per square centimeter. It's very heavy. It's like to have three elephants uh, on, a, uh, on a dime, on a small coin. And, uh, and you say, pressure could, you, could you say it again, Carol, just to make sure? Uh, did you say three elephants? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three elephants of five tons. If they are, uh, if uh, the weight of, of 15 tons on a, on a dime, uh, uh, 10 cents of uh, of, uh, of dollars, uh, this is the pressure we have uh, on on the product. The thing is, the pressure is transmitted by water, so it's it's the pressure like the one we have in the sea. Well, much much uh, much more pressure than the than the one we can we, we can have in the in the sea. Uh, in the deepest uh, uh, ocean, uh, six times more than, than the pressure we can have uh, in the deepest ocean, in the Mariana uh, Trench. Uh, but so this, it, this it, pressure sorry, is applied. I, I, six, yeah, times, six times the pressure in, in the Mariana's Trench? Yes, that, that's it. And, uh, and, but this pressure is transmitted by water. So it's, uh, it's the same pressure everywhere. It's not like in a, in a press. Where it, where the the pressure is uh, what we call static, so it's uh, uh, the product would be uh, completely smashed, but it's a pressure going everywhere. So the volume of the of the food decreases of about 15, 20, 25 percent, and after depressurization, it comes back. This is this is very nice because the pressure is like. Um, well, it's it's a little bit similar to the temperature, except that. The molecules goes uh, closer with the pressure and with the temperature. It it is the opposite effect. When you increase the the temperature, in general, the molecules are are uh, are more separated. And with the pressure, it's completely the opposite. So we have 
with the with the high pressure we have uh, things uh, effects similar to the temperature like killing microorganisms but on the other side we have other um, properties or effects very different so this is really for me it has been always very scientifically very interest, interesting to study this is uh, this is what i like i'm sure it's it's fascinating uh, i know uh, after i started getting involved with this as i walked through the the, the store uh, i go to a kroger and whenever i walk through the store i become more aware of what looks like uh, products that have been um, uh, hpp but my question to you is uh, is that whenever it does kill the microorganisms and the pathogens, uh, why do you still have to refrigerate it? Well, because uh, uh, in this sense, uh, the, the process is different from heat processing because we do not inactivate enzymes or we inactivate the enzymes really partially. This is why uh, we have to keep refrigerated because we, uh, we have to avoid enzymatic um, oxidation for example of, of food and and on the on the other end uh, we have uh, we have uh, we do not inactivate spores microbial spores so it's not a sterilization it's a pasteurization uh, and so the, the the shelf life is much log larger it's much longer for pasteurized uh, pasteurized food if you if you keep it in the fridge so for both things uh, I would say almost all the, the, the food process under pressure are, are stored after pressurization uh, in chill uh, temperature. So I, 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 I'm sorry. No, I see. Yes? No, that, that makes perfect sense then of why you still need to refrigerate. Yes. Uh, it's uh, Matt and, I'm sorry, yes? Matt and Carol, uh, we do have a question from Greg. And I was wondering the same thing. Okay. So what technology or instrument or is there a sensing mechanism that is used to measure the high hydrostatic pressure in the chamber? Or is that all yes. built in? Mm -hmm. So we measure the pressure with two pressure transducer. So the, um, uh, also one, one properties of the pressure, uh, which is very, which is different from the, the uh, heat, is that the pressure is the same, is the same in the, in the product, it's the same in all the processing chamber and uh, um, going up to the processing chamber, we have high pressure pipes and the, the, because the, the pressurized water come from the intensifier inside the, the chamber through pipes and on the pipes, we connect uh, two pressure transducer. Those pressure transducer work with, uh, it's, it's a metallic, um, uh, they, they have a metallic part that under pressure uh, uh, move the shape move a little bit and we measure the movements this is transmitted electrically uh, to uh, well, to an electronic device that can uh, um, uh, uh, evaluate with the shape modification of this metallic membrane under pressure what what is the pressure applied so we have two uh, on each on the machine. We have two um, uh, certified uh, uh, high pressure transducer measuring the pressure continuously, and then uh, we have also also other devices to check, uh, but with a little bit less precision, uh, the, the pressure. So we measure the pressure in the, intens in the intensifier, and also we measure uh, the elongation of the yoke. The machine is made with a chamber with wedge, plugs, and a big yoke, which is the frame that maintain the system, that maintain the, the, the plug close to the, to the vessel, because the, the plugs are not uh, with a screw. They are, uh, uh, this is, uh, we have only a seal. And so during the pressurization, the, the yoke, uh, uh, have a, a slight elongation of few millimeters and we measure that. I mean, the yoke is a very heavy part. For the biggest machine, the yoke uh, is uh, 50 tons. Mm. Uh, and uh, so it's a really big piece of metal to be able to maintain those, uh, this, uh, this big pressure. And so we measure uh, uh, the elongation of the, of the machine. 
So we have different devices. Whenever you're talking about the intensifier, could you elaborate a little bit more about uh, how does that work? So it's uh, it's uh, quite, I would say, simple. Uh, it's we have a, uh, we have a motor that moves um, uh, an oil pump. We pressurize uh, oil uh, up to around uh, 200 uh, bars. So this should be in psi. We have to multiply uh, 3,000 psi more or less. And uh, and the, the the pressurized oil push a big piston, and this big pish, piston push a small one, small piston which push uh, the water. So it's uh, an electro hydraulic intensifier. Mm -hmm. So we have the the oil piston. We have oil coming by one way, pushing the piston, and then coming by the other way, pushing the piston. So uh, with the movement of the uh, oil, and then uh, water piston, we intensify uh, the pressure of the water. In, in our intensifier, the multiplication factor is 35. So when we have 200, 200 bars of, uh, of oil pressure, we have, uh, uh, have 7,000 bar of, uh, of, of 80, uh, almost uh, 100,000 PSI uh, pressure in uh, uh, for the water, I so see. this this is how we uh, we 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 create the the pressure. So we we send uh, we send uh, more water in the same volume of the chamber with a pump. Okay, fascinating. So I guess my next question was: You went back. There were always two sensors. You always talk two pressure transducers. Could you elaborate yes. on why that is? So the, the pressure transducer just check the pressure as the pressure is the same in in all over the volume of the chamber, and it's 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 the pressure also inside the 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 product. Mm -hmm. the, the the beauty also of the, of the pressure is that uh, pressure is a wave, so uh, it's it's everywhere the everywhere the same pressure. Mm. Uh, so in in a fluid the, the the pressure is the same everywhere. So we measure from from the pipe arriving to the to the chamber, uh, we, we measure the, the pressure. We have two uh, uh, pressure transducers in case one fail, yes. because okay. really the pressure is the critical point. We don't okay. want to be below the, the pressure we target, and we don't want to be for safety reason over. For sure, that, that makes that makes so much sense. Um, so one thing I, I had to had. One thing that kind of grabbed me by attention, and I did go through the store, is uh, it looks like after you explained to me what the packaging is, that you see a lot of guacamole. Yes, uh, really. Well, we have uh, we have different type of products we can process under pressure, from vegetable products like guacamole, juices, beverage, meat, seafood. Uh, well, we are, we have a lot, but really the well. Really, the, the the consolidated trends in HPP are that's true, Matt. Are uh, guacamole? You can see on the on the right uh, side some some well known brands in in uh, um, in United States. Uh, some of our customers, and and also we sell about I would say one third of our machine in the last year we've sold to juice manufacturer like Evolution or Suja in the in the US. But uh, this is really the the this is really the, the products we more process under pressure. In the case of the guacamole, company, why, would, yeah. why would the Sorry? juice companies go down that road? Because it, it seems like doing a high pressure processing would be more expensive over, sure. over maybe a retort type process. Why would a company even go down that road? Uh, because this is uh, a juice like the fresh juice you can squeeze at home. Well. Nevertheless, uh, well, the problem is that when it's almost impossible to squeeze, for example, green juices at home, or you have uh, really a puree, uh, it's it's quite difficult to have a to have a, a, a fresh juice. With HPP, you keep uh, the freshness, so you keep the enzyme, you keep the color, you keep the flavor, but you increase the shelf life. So this can be done industrially. Uh, and and uh, and we can extend the shelf life from few weeks to few months. 
with a, really a quality very, very similar to fresh. So this is to be fresher. I mean, the pasteurized, heat pasteurized juice are good, but the HPP juice are much fresher. Got that's it. the that's the things. Concerning the guacamole, um, we have two benefits. We inactivate at least partially, but it's enough. The polyphenol oxidase, so the products, the guacamole does not turn brown. Uh, okay. So it's better than if it would be fresh. Mm -hmm. And also for guacamole, we inactivate uh, spoilage microorganisms and pathogens, and, and we can extend the shelf life uh, yeah, from a few weeks to a few months, depending a bit the pH, the recipe. And so you can have a fresh-like guacamole, but with a, with, in a convenient uh, uh, format with a, with a much longer shelf life. So that's... Uh, that's the, yeah. That's really, it's uh, the technology used to have a safer product and, um, and, and a fresher one. For vegetable, for plant-based product, is to be much fresher. And for, and for meat products, like the one you, you can see here, because Hormel Group is, is the company having more HPP machine. Uh, uh, for example, they have the brand, uh, of course, Hormel uh, Natural Choice, but they have also Columbus for for um, uh, meat products, sliced meat products. In this case, this is mainly, in, in meat business, this is mainly for safety because the, the products don't have to be fresh. Or in the, in the case of Apple Gates, this is also for safety because this company, they want to remove all the chemical preservatives and, uh, and so the shelf life could be, uh, could be uh, very short. Right. And or they, they can they could have problem with uh, without HPP they, they could have um, uh, contamination with some pathogens so so if they want to achieve the the safety targets uh, in activating microorganisms they have to to use uh, they have to use HPP mainly. So, so whenever you're given a product uh, to let's say from uh, Applegate or Columbus. And you start doing trials in, in your uh, in your labs. Is, is there? Uh, could you tell me a little about maybe like the curve, like the pressurization curves? Does that matter? What are some of the critical parameters you have to look for other than just pressure? Is, is there other things that get involved with that to to hit the, the kill step that you're looking for? Uh, well, I would say the two main parameters are pressure and time. Uh, and concerning, uh, so this is concerning the, I would say the machine, saying that that we we have uh, almost, I would say, half of our customer processing at the maximum pressure of the machine, which is 87,000 psi, 6,000 bar. So then you, you can, we cannot go over for because the machine, this is the maximum pressure of the machine. So you can you can play with the time, mm -hmm. the temperature, it's chill or room temperature, the processing time. The processing temperature, so it's not a big point. Uh, th there is no influence. This is not really a, a critical parameter. But concerning the recipe, the critical parameter are, are the pH. Lower, uh, it's uh, it's um, it's better because we we have a synergy between low pH and high pressure concerning killing microorganisms, or presence of uh, antimicrobial substances so and and we have an also another very important parameter which is water activity so uh, more water in the in the products uh, better would, would work the high pressure uh, process uh, concerning killing microorganisms so for example the processing of the columbus sausages uh, dry cured sausages. It's much longer than the, the the process of the guacamole. Could be uh, six minutes, six thousand bar, or eighty-seven thousand psi, and the guacamole would be three minutes. So we are playing around this uh, this type of um, range of time and and pressure. And so, so once we, you get to the six thousand bars, you're saying it's it's the, the time at six thousand bars. Yes. And, that's, and, and then that time is correlated to, from what I heard you say, was the, the pH and the water activity of, of what you're trying to um, HP. You're right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. So we, uh, um, 
so when, when a customer wants to to develop a product uh, uh, he needs to perform um, validation studies studies of, of shelf life and and of course we we can give uh, we can give advices on on the what should be the, the parameter that would work with the with the products mm -hmm. uh, we have now hundreds of products uh, processed all over the world so we have quite a good experience uh, but I'm, I would say not every day, but I would say every month we have uh, uh, com companies coming and 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 trying to to develop new to develop new new products. So that's uh, in this case we we had to we had to study the parameters the pro of the products and we have to do some trials. So the trials are uh, I mean checking uh, the uh, the impact of the of the on packaging. And uh, and also inactivation of microorganisms and evaluating the, the shelf life. Is that a how much time do you see people coming to you and saying we already have a package, and here we want to HPP this package we already have, or do they come to you and go, hey, we have this product, we have this sausage, and what kind of package do we need if we want to go down the HPP road? Well, the, the the package is uh, in the in the uh, impact technology. When when I mean the currently uh, uh, all the machine in the world work with the the product uh, package. So in this case, the package needs to be flexible and need to resist to water because the the, the product is in contact of the water during the the pressurization. So uh, in general, it's plastic. Uh, I mean. Uh, it's quite easy to use, uh, I would say, um, a regular plastic that, that you can easily easily find. So it's just trying. In some cases, we could have delamination, but it's it's not so it's not so difficult to to find. So we have different type of. Uh, uh, we can use uh, vacuum pack. Uh, we can use a trays, a pouch. Um, what we have to avoid is a package with a lot of gas because the gas uh, is completely compressed under pressure. And so the shape of the package would be really a smash. And at the depressurization, in some cases, it doesn't come back really very well. So it can be, can be damaged. So we try to reduce uh, as much as possible the, the modified atmosphere uh, uh, we have in the package. The, the best is uh, skin package. Or a vacuum, vacuum package. But it's uh, we. Uh, I mean, it could be only to develop the the, the products and start producing. Uh, it can takes from we had some company. Uh, it could takes longer depending the rhythm they go. But normally in few months, I would say you you can have uh, the the products on the uh, on the market. Of course, that's, you that's you you need to do to do the the proper validation. To be sure that uh, to the uh, the end of the shelf life you have no problem, and in the U.S. for example for juices you need to check that your process inactivate five logs of uh, of the three main pathogens. But this is I would say in minimum I would say half a year. That's uh, okay. You could you could do it. So and then you would need I would say another half a year to uh, order uh, HPP machine. And to have it installed and delivered, or you can use a, a tolling manufacturers. There are many, many of them in the, in the U.S. and and they offer the service. And so you you pay as you go. So you can go with your products and your validation studies uh, to be able to show that uh, that the the products uh, process under pressure would be processed in the in the good condition to the to the food safety authorities. And, and then you, you can start commercializing. So I would say uh, one year. One year? One year. Yeah. One year. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go down that road of validation because that's really interesting. I'm, I'm an automation guy from the beginning of my career. And one thing I was always uh, infatuated with was data and getting as much data out of the process as possible just to understand how the equipment's behaving and for optimization. Uh, what what do you do? What do you folks do with uh, data, and how does that uh, get wrapped into the, the the validation processes that you get involved with your customer? Mm -hmm. 
Well, really, uh, there is uh, there is really uh, I would say no validation of the machine because the machine is just we just have to check we uh, we reach the pressure and and we measure the time. So this is not very complex. The validation is on the products itself. So I the see. products need need to have uh, the the customer need to have a stable pH. Uh, or to make the, all the production with the more or less the same pH, I would say we, we have a slight. Um, uh, or he has to uh, use uh, uh, the products with the highest pH, the, the more neutral pH, the less acidic one, and the products with the lower uh, water activity. So in this case, uh, he can do categories, taking the the worst products worst or the first where. Yeah, we expect that uh, we would have uh, uh, less uh, uh, microbial inactivation, so lower water activity and higher pH, and uh, by categories of uh, of products. For example, produce one citrus, the other one green juices, and the other one berries, for example, something like that. And um, and in laboratories, you can inoculate uh, the three the three main pathogen or the the pertinent pathogens. Which are in general uh, E. coli, uh, uh, Salmonella, and Listeria, and and see if you uh, you process under pressure, and then you see what is the log reduction, and and you check if you, for example, for meat uh, in general it's three log reduction, for juices in the U.S. it's five, and then of course you can also um, without inoculation check if you you will get the the shelf life you want with the spoilage microorganisms. So this is what 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 is the the validation for uh, for the HPP product. Very good. So whenever is there a, do you see a trend whenever people come to you uh, of what sort of problems are they're trying to solve? Uh, do you, is there a trend there? I would say that. Uh, I would say that uh, with the slide I have here. You have people wanted really to solve problem of listeria that that uh, the products like uh, the products of Columbus, the dry cured meats, uh, when it dries during uh, a month, you can always have few listeria inside. So if you want to be listeria free, you need to find a solution. So heat process is not possible because it's dry cured, need to to stay raw. If you cook, it's it's not the same product. So or it's really to reach the, the safety objective, to inactivate some oh, possibly present presence of pathogens, or in the case of products, other products like Applegate, is you want to remove all the chemical preservative, and then you need to stabilize and you need to have a safe product. And in the case of the guacamole or the juice, you want to keep the color, you want to keep the freshness, you cannot eat process, and, and and you want to and you want to to stabilize. So you you want really to keep the freshness. The freshness. And in the case of yeah, the freshness of the plant-based product. I would say for meat, it's more safety or removing um, chemical preservative. And for the plant-based products, is to increase uh, increase the shelf life and of course inactivate the, the pathogen to keep the freshness of the of the plant-based product. Uh, I, could we go ahead and show that video that you had? I think uh, that, that video helps show a little bit about what we're talking about here. How heavy is one of these pieces of equipment? Okay, so uh, the the for the for the juices, yeah, uh, for the juices we uh, we have developed a new a new machine, the the bulk um, uh, that process in bulk the, the juices because the the biggest uh, juice producer. Um, are in general really reluctant to load and unload in the machine the bottles okay. because it's uh, they are used to go from one tank to the other and then to bottle. So we developed the the bulk machine. So you, you can see a, a really short video, one minute video of the of the machine. So that's. Uh, Should start. Before I start the video, uh, Carol, there was, speaking of juice, um, Ivana had a question. Is there yes. a maximum <clears throat> bricks? I had to look that up. Sugar content, I think. 
that HPP is effective for juice? Uh, it's, it's always effective for juice because it's only when we reach 50 bricks, which is not juice, it's really concentrated, uh, it's puree. Uh, then this is when we start to see the, the, uh, a, a much lower inactivation of, of, uh, of micro, microorganisms. So the, the really the, the water activity it's more it's much more problem in in, in dry cured meat or in in solid products for juices I mean if it's uh, if it's liquid even if we have done trials for example with the juice full of chia seed so mm -hmm. it's almost a gel but it's still very high water activity and we still inactivate microorganisms we did those trials because we were afraid that perhaps with seeds we would change the parameter and the and the, the inactivation will, will not be so high and it, it it was not the case it was it was working very uh, as 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 if it would be uh, the same juice but without the the, the seeds okay that's a great question because my, uh, going down that road what sort of uh food gets damaged what what, what are bad applications a uh, bad application it's uh, it's all the dry foods so flour paper uh, things of very highly uh, very highly concentrated uh, purees uh, when you don't have water because the water um, so under pressure the the water pressurize the package transmit the pressure but the physical uh, chemical effect on the microorganisms are also transmitted by water. If there is no, uh, uh, if there is uh, really uh, few water in the products, the the killing effect of the pressure is is not uh, is not the same. The, the product is protected by the by the low water activity. Got it. Interesting. Uh, were we able to queue up that video, Christine? Or yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and start playing it. Hyperbaric presents a breakthrough innovation, the Hyperbaric 525 Bulk, a high pressure processing machine for large production of beverages. This unique equipment is based on a totally new concept in which beverages are processed in bulk before bottling, delivering up to 5,000 liters per hour. With the new in bulk machines, the total cost of ownership per litre will be cut by more than 50% compared to traditional HPP in pack process. Energy and wear parts consumption is significantly diminished. Labour cost is drastically reduced. A single person can operate the Hype Barrack 525 bulk because no manual handling is needed. The Hype Barrack 525 bulk is the world's most cost effective and productive equipment reaching up to 5,000 liters per hour. To find out more about high pressure processing, please visit us at hyperbaric.com. That, that's a neat video, Carol. Yeah, uh, how big is that machine? Uh, if you, what sort of footprint do you look for? So it's, it's, it's quite big. Uh, the weight is uh, 90 metric tons, so... Uh, if you convert with in elephants, I would say this is roughly 20 elephants. <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, this is, uh, well, a 60 meter uh, long, uh, five, me five meter large and five meter eight. So this is a big piece of, uh, uh, of, uh, of equipment yeah sure. it's uh, it's quite it's quite heavy it's quite heavy the first uh, uh hyperbaric uh, bulk uh, the machine you've seen on the video uh has been installed at the end of of uh, of last year nearby paris at uh, 100 graph from, from paris and uh, the the factory where where it is installed uh, is uh, beside the river and they have to to place big pillars in the floor to be able to withstand the the, the weight. Normally, right. with industrial floor, just reinforcing a bit, this is enough. But in their case, mm -hmm. the, the the soil it's uh, it's it's really uh, 
to uh, very weak, quite weak, and and so they had to to make uh, quite uh, uh, well to to, to reinforce uh, quite a lot. But we have installed big machine like that. Uh, I mean, at least fifty all over the world, and uh, and it, it's heavy, but it's not a big deal. It's a lot of concrete. That's it's a lot, all. <laughs> a lot of concrete for sure. Uh, if yes. you want to do a trial, uh, you know, if somebody came to you, where would you do a trial at? So you uh, you can come, of course, you can come and, and visit us in, in Spain. We have all in North America, we have a pilot plant in Miami, uh, Florida. And, uh, and uh, you can also uh, visit some uh, uh, technical center university having a pilot plant machine like uh, uh, Cornell University, uh, Nebraska University uh, in the United States. In Europe, we have, uh, we have other uh, customers. And there are much more uh, laboratories that have uh, small uh, vessels where, 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 you can do, uh, where you can do trials. So that's, that's not too difficult. And of course, uh, uh, we are very happy to, to receive the customer to make, uh, to make trials, just contacting sure. us. And we have a lot of uh, customer offering uh, uh, tolling manufacturing that open their door if you want just to, to test, just to see how is going the, the products. I mean, they are, they are very happy. When you want to inoculate with micro pathogen microorganisms, then you have to go to laboratories or pilot plants that are not uh, located in, in food factory, of course. But for Got the it. first trial, j just to try and to check the, the quality and shelf life. Um, I mean, they are, I think, between our machine and the machine of our, uh, of our colleagues, of our competitors, uh, they should be in the United States around the uh, 100 machines. So, and all over the world, uh, more than 500 machines are, are installed. We have uh, wow. we have almost 300. Wow, that's impressive. So, one thing, I, I, as we talk, and I and I see, I see the comfort with what you talk on this subject. Could you talk a little bit about your rise within Hyperbaric, uh, and you know how you've risen to the director level that you're at? Ah, okay. Yes. Well, uh, I. Uh, so that, that's, I'm, I'm not sure if you if you see me or if you see my screen, but in any case, uh, well, I I did my PhD and I started with uh, uh, on HPP, so that was really really a goal for me in the life to to uh, to work uh, to develop this technology. And I, when I started with uh, with Hyperbaric, the company uh, was uh, building the second machine so i'm here almost since the the beginning and um, and that was really in interesting for me to to be between the customer between the the science with my with my phd and also the engineering team to uh, to develop the the technology so i'm in this business for i mean with this technology for 20 now 28 years and 17 with uh, with hyperreg this really has been this is this is good this is good to start from scratch and to grow with the with the company so when i started i was taking care of i would say sales and application with the general manager and now we have a, I, I have a team of colleagues of uh, almost 15 colleagues between application sales and uh, and so this has this has been a growth, and really I, it's it's like that. I mean you, it's I would say it's like a patient, and and you grow with or oh, I I've grown with the with the company. So uh, that's uh, that was nice. I think uh, uh, I, what I prefer uh, working is to I, I I define myself as creative. So. Uh, being with a very in a, working in a very innovative company for a new technology, I think this is uh, this is nice because you can be you can propose new ideas, you can test it, and uh, you can see when they are good. Not all of them, of course, but when right. they are good, you you can see their implementation, and this right. is really grateful. This is really what what I what I like. So. 
I I was uh, I was really uh, uh, I, I really enjoyed the award I, I received because I think that uh, ladies can also be involved in of course in innovation and can inspire uh, all the I would say the companies but uh, we we can be I think the women we can be as as creative as as men I would not say more or less or depending depending the people but I think we we can bring. Uh, uh, to the to the industry, uh, we can bring ideas, and uh, and and this helps, uh, of course, collaborating with with men. Uh, it's it's stupid to exclude uh, anyone, but I think we can bring also, uh, perhaps in some cases, a, a different point of view, and uh, that's nice to be to be included, to participate. I really enjoy that. Very good. Do you have any lesson learned? That, you know, as that. The Red Circle honoree. Do you have any lessons learned over your career that uh, for men or for women to to help inspire them uh, to um, uh, to accelerate their career and learn from your successes and maybe even from your failures? Uh, well, I think you uh, you need to be. Uh, really motivated but by what uh, I would say you need to enjoy what you do I would say uh, and um, uh, to be uh, to be engaged to uh, um, I would say you don't have to be uh, shy you need to share your uh, ideas your critics not, not to be of course offensive but uh, I think it in, in this case it, it it, it helps, and um, and I would say my failure. It took me quite a lot to work uh, in a team. Mm -hmm. So during when I started with uh, uh, with, uh, with with the company and in the com the technical center I was working with before, I was on I was alone almost doing my and and then doing my my work and trying to to convince customer to explain the technology and then it took me years to be able to build a team but really now uh, I, I really enjoy because working with people uh, that are better than you I think this is this is the the best also you, you can do when you see that other brings good ideas and uh, this, this is uh, this is really what I what I like. But it took me a, a while to 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 change and to be uh, as much as confident uh, in in my team or in my colleagues uh, than I am because I'm quite self confident person. So uh, so I think this this was previously this, this was my failure. I have a, a lot of others, but uh, uh, the, the the list could be perhaps too long for the webinar. <laughs> no, I mean, I thank you for sharing those and being vulnerable. And sharing, I, I love your passion that you bring, mm -hmm. and I, I can tell just you love what you do. You, you, you're, you're so engaged with this, and it, it's always wonderful to talk to people who just love what they do. Uh, yes, I, I think if you can find uh, th this is uh, this is my advice to to some uh, new colleagues or young people we hire. When I see what that what the job they propose. Uh, we can propose them because we have a limited uh, position to, to offer. When I see they are not really pleased with that, uh, honestly, I, I in, in general I say to them, okay, if it's not your, if you don't feel really happy or comfortable, you are you are good. That's much better. You find something different that you would enjoy. And right. I, I would not uh, doing doing a job you you don't like. Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot of time in the in in, in the life working uh, take a lot of time. So if you don't like what you do, uh, that's uh, I think that's uh, that's not good. <laughs> no, yeah, and you spend more time with your coworkers and your family. Uh, I, yes. I know I do, <laughs> and you're right, and that's why I love uh, where I work. I love the people I work with, and I, I love my job. So I, and uh, and I see that in you as well. Uh, so it's it's nice to to see that. I think my last question I wanted to ask you, Carol, was you, you know I we talked about juices, we talked about um, 
uh, you know, different products. Could you bring up that one graph? Uh, yep, this one. The, the growth trend. Yeah, whenever I saw that graph earlier, you, you see that inflection point in 2011. And so my, my question is, as we're approaching 2019 and going further, do you see another inflection point that, that that's going to take that curve up even higher in, in the HPP world? Uh, well, uh, I think the 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 the, the 2011 change of the curve was due to uh, really the development of bigger machine from us and from our, uh, uh, our our colleague from other brands because we we launched in 2008 2009 bigger machines so giving a higher production and a lower uh, cost per kilo processing cost per kilo so okay. that was the first thing and then we started especially in the United States with juice so our first uh, installation was in 2009 was Evolution Fresh and then uh, Evolution Fresh uh, was purchased by uh, Starbucks in, in 2011, and then Starbucks invested in, in, in several more machines, and then Suja and other, other brands that started, and really the juice was the big, uh, the big growth. For the coming years, what we, what we see concerning products is we see, uh, we see uh, baby food growing, uh, because uh, over process, um, products are not really healthy so sterilize baby foods okay this is safe on a microbial point of view but uh, this is not really uh, i would really healthy because it's uh, it really i would say it's not minimally processed is it's over uh, over processed um, so we we see more and more baby foods and and we have a, a nice new application that we see it, it has started la last year and the year before uh really growing it's the fresh uh, uh the fresh uh, pet food so this is for the coming this is for the coming year fantastic if you, would you mind if you don't mind carol being a little vulnerable here and telling that story you shared with christine uh, uh, <laughs> whenever we first met. Yeah, perhaps, I don't remember. It was perhaps six or seven years uh, ago. I, I was visiting in United States um, uh, a tolling uh, manufacturer having a, a HPP machine and giving the and giving the service. And then I, I, I was going through the factory and seeing the, the pallets of, of the products that, that they were processing. And uh, I had a look and I saw an, one pouch there was the face of a dog and I thought, so I was in the United States, I thought they eat here uh, dog meat. And I was like, <laughs> that's strange. And then I, I realized, I said, no, 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 no. That's impossible. That should be pet food. And for <laughs> me, the, the technology was, um, that was for premium. So for human food, premium food, and I was like, pet food, I can't believe that. But uh, on the other, the other, the only other possibility was dog food, and I said, no, if I would be in China, perhaps, or in Asia, somewhere, but in United States, for sure, dog meat, this, 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 this is not possible. So my first idea was dog meat in United States. What, what's that? And it, and it was pet food. So it started with a, um, uh, with a, I would say six or uh, five or six years ago, per perhaps. And it's going up. It's going up because the 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 pet food is uh, is over uh, is over processed uh, exactly. because it's it's sterile. Uh, it it has a lot of uh, of different ingredients, or it's dry, or it's uh, sterilized, and uh, and the, the nutritional quality is uh, is not like if it would be fresh. So more and more people purchase. Uh, 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 fresh raw it's mainly meat could be mixed with meat and meat and and, uh, and uh, cereals or or vegetables and uh, and they prefer to give a fresh uh, fresh product to the, to their pet to to improve their health mm -hmm. um, so this is this is the growing business That's and perhaps in the in the future perhaps with the with the bulk machine i hope that we will develop uh, uh, 
the process of uh, of other i would say beverages uh, one could be beer this is one of our hope in in, in a hyperbaric and because beer it's uh, the craft beer the good beer have to be processed and uh, have to be pasteurized but it decreases the, the quality and then uh, have to be uh, bottling or in can or in glass and this is not possible to process in an impact machine so and the other one uh, another dream we have but this would need to change the regulation in the united states would be to process the raw milk to have yeah. a, a cold uh, a cold pasteurized um, milk so that that would be that would be that would be nice and wow we have a customer that want to develop that in europe in the, this year, hopefully, is doing all the validation studies. Uh, so perhaps this year or next year, this would be uh, we would we will have milk uh, HPP milk. There is okay. one brand commercializing milk uh, process under pressure, but Impact with in the processing in the bottle in 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 Australia. So that's uh, we we have we have a lot of products that that could uh, that could go up, and we think that. Uh, uh, offering in pack and in bulk uh, would help to grow uh, to grow the, the business in general. It's so exciting! It's, it's so exciting to hear what that future looks like for you folks. And I look forward to walking in the grocery store and seeing some of those products that we're talking about as they start to become commercialized. So yeah, I think you, that's trying to that's trying to wrap yeah. things up here, Carol. Is there anything last things you want to close with? Any last little nuggets you want to pass on to the viewers? I would say no. J just so showing you the picture of the of the awards, so of the red uh, circle, and with with my colleagues, uh, uh, with my my colleagues of of, of Miami, and, uh, and my two colleagues in Matthew and, and Andres uh, uh, working in uh, in in Spain. So, if we have to wrap up, this is the, for me. This is the last uh, slide. Awesome. That's a great picture. Well, thank you so much, Carol. Uh, Christine, uh, anything you'd like to add? Uh, just folks, look for the follow-up email with the recording, um, and please fill out the survey. Uh, both of you, thank you so much. This was a, such a fun discussion, and um, I'll probably be listening to the recording later again. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much to to uh, uh, Christine and, and Matt. This was a, a good moment, great moment with you. Thank you so much. Carol, thank you so much for being with us today. I know it's your evening, so go enjoy your, your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Bye-bye.